All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take these plates off here. You'll find zip ties all over the place that you have to discard. And now you'll take your sign light connections off. Push that out of the way. And now you're ready to take your sign off. Put the sign in a nice safe place so it doesn't get ruined. Okay, so on the International, we're either going to have a couple of different scenarios. We're going to have electric or air. On this one here, we're doing an electric arm, so we're going to disconnect the air system so that it's not going to be free flowing. So to do this, we're going to open up, and if you're lucky, you will maybe already have a butt connector on here. This is the uh, air system for the sign here that we want to disconnect, discontinue using. So we're going to pull that out by compressing this. We will then take and clean up the uh, compression on that so we have a clean fitting. So we'll take and cut and crimp that. Now we'll take an end cap and put the end cap on the airline. This will now, and push it until it clicks real good. That now takes care of that so we don't have air bleeding out. The next thing we need to do is we now want to uh, do the electrical power connection for the accessory. On internationals, they're very nice. They actually give us an accessory block right here. Okay guys, we're now doing the International. International is very much like the Thomas C2s. The one thing different is instead of having a blue wire, we now have a red wire for our main signal wire coming in. Uh, and this is for the, uh, the uh, signal relay out here. We'll have the same thing for two red wires. You may just have one sometimes, but you typically this one here is going to have two red lights. These are power, the black's ground, the white wire is ground for this. Otherwise, everything else is going to wire up the exact same. Hot coming in to this and then we got the two hots going out to the LEDs and this is going to be ground jumbled up. Okay, talk about removing the piece. Okay, so on the International you want to remove this specialty box. You're just going to take out the four screws. Now if you remember, if you remember the airline's already been removed are capped off on here, all we're going to do is disconnect it. So. Okay. You're good to go. I was going to say cut it, but... Alright, so you just want to pull... Are you back on? Mm -hmm. You just want to pull these through just to be careful that they don't you don't pull the ends off. Right. Get the grommet off here. We're not going to use this small grommet. We're going to remove both of these. So on the International, what we're going to do is we've removed our, we've removed our screw uh, out of the fuse block right here so that we're going to have, we're going to actually now set that back in. So basically we've taken our fusible link that we've done and we've put um, 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 a connector on the end of it that we will now use. Let's insert the screw and now let's actually just tighten that back up and this will take care of the fusible link side as we connect it to our blue wire in a second once we get this tightened up. 
Make sure you move that around so that that's going to fall into the slot okay. Just snug it and that part will be good. Make sure to always put your end cap back up over the fuse. That part will be good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take and connect our uh, blue power lead in. So let's strip off an end of our blue wire. Gently twist it. So now take and connect that into our red bullet connector. Blue bullet connector. And let's crimp that well. And at this point, we now have our power wire that we will now use to run up through here. Now, I generally like to feed it back in the back side around some of this conduit so we don't have a bunch of loose wire laying around. And that will make it a little bit cleaner for the install. And then we're going to run this around back deep into the back side of the bus here. Sometimes you might have to take the lid your watch out of the way. And take this over and let's now go ahead and also pull our loom over here. This other side, just fish it through. We're going to take a piece of loom here and we will start feeding that on top of this. Let's make sure you get a little bit generous with it. Please make sure it gets back through both walls back there. And Let's bring that up. Our box is going to come up to right starting up in here, so let's just make sure we have enough area for that. Clean that up and then we will take and crimp that out. Not crimp, but cut it. Alright, and then this will be ready for the next phase of this. Let's go ahead and pull our wires through. This is a a cover plate that uh, David has made for us. We will ship the material for this with our arms. Just make sure all that's going to be able to fit nice and buttoned up. And then David will do the job here for siliconing. I will step out of his way. I'm going to be very generous with the silicone. We don't want any water getting in behind here. We can always clean up the excess later once it's in place. With the rivet here, since that's going to be in the way, what you're going to do is drill the head of it out. Now go. All right, so we're going to use the two existing holes that were here from the original specialty box to set this. What you'll notice though at the bottom, this is not going to hit flat. It does need to have to be, it does have to be flat, so we're going to remove these two screws that are here. And those are uh, two or three. Two or three. We'll have to see what, what we've got. So I'm pull up. that out, it's two. Okay. Let's go ahead and drop that down. We'll take those out, caulk them up. And what about the rivets here? And then okay. So then at the same point here, you've also got a rivet that's in the way. So what we're going to do is drill that out, drill the head, and just knock it loose. Now you're going to use the same bolts that you just took off. Uh, 
hold that thing to put it back on with. The holes are pre-drilled and lined up in the exact same manner. Tighten up the top one really secure and then level up this bottom piece before you start to tighten up the rest. We're going to eyeball this to make sure it's approximately level with the parallel to the bottom rib which will make it right with the bus. Here's the number 12 1 inch self drilling screws. There's 13 of these, which is a little bit of an overkill, but that way nobody can worry, has to worry about it ever falling off a bus. At this point you can take off the temporary brace that just held it in shipping. Now I'm going to tighten up this lower bolt, and then we're going to insert a new one up there, where they never had one. Sometimes you'll find that they've double plated them, as in this case, in which case you'll have to drill it first and then put in the screw. For the drill, you just get through that extra heavy piece of metal. When you're using a self-drilling and a, and a uh, impact wrench, you can tell if the thing is holding solid because it'll go at the end. If it starts to just go around like this, then the thing is stripped and you'll have to put in a bigger size. And if, with practice, you'll realize how far you need to put it in. Sometimes there's insulation inside the bus at the panel and it'll back off a self-drilling screw in which case you have to stop and take it out and put in a regular screw. A regular screw that's not self-tapping. Some of the positions require an extension on the so on the driver bit. that spot then you just back it out and you go to the next size larger which is a number 14 then you heard it ratchet at the end you know it's tight. At that point you test this make sure it's reasonably smooth. Sometimes it'll be a little tight because of everything that's done but wiggle it a little bit and it, all of a sudden you'll find that it's pretty easy to turn. There's the bearing seat. The sign goes back on same as you took it off same bolt holes this frame is designed to fit the sign bolt holes exactly. 
You're replacing the same nuts that work you took off. Then we're ready to put on the first part of the steel frame. Notice you want one tab on one side of the side and the other on the other side of the side. Point at the tabs. This is held on with three, three eighths nylon, nylon insert nuts. Again, the whole thing is done with a lot of overkill. Uh, three eighths is way more than adequate to hold it on, but we chose that to make sure that there's no probable reason that it would ever come off. We even had one in Maine where a snowplow came along and took clipped off the arm and the electric arm, and the uh, metal steel, the black steel frame, still held on the bus. One of the things I like to do when I first get it installed like this is shake it and you can see that the bus will move but this thing isn't coming off and you know you've done a good job. So now we're ready for our box. We'll place the box in between the rub rails like this and make sure it is lined up. What? To the you want even space out through this top rub rail. Now you don't want to do it to break. You gotta be careful to break these ears here. So once you get your screw in, sometimes you might have to drill it out. that and you will take you'll see your ground wire in here in this box and you want to attach that Sometimes when you're mounting this, this light, this uh, mid-bus light is in the way or something and you have to move it, remove the two screws, pull this out, you'll find there's plenty of wire. You can either go down here or up here or uh, even as low as here. There's no height requirement on it other than above three feet, so you have a plenty of playroom to put in here. There's probably an extra foot, foot and a half of wire inside here. This time we did not have to move it. It's not in the way of anything. Uh, what size hole do you need to drill? It's a 916 in the back here that's drilled to, to take your plug. There you go. We have a plug that we provide like this. It'll go exactly in that hole. Now I'm going to attach the actuator. And we're just going to do that loosely while it finishes up the rest of the electrical wiring. We're just going to set the bolt in there and just put it on with your fingers at the bottom here. This is a 7 16 bolt. One of the interesting and 
uh, good features of the engineering early on is that this piece is stainless steel so it uh, won't corrode with uh, use and so is this piece over here as is the main shaft which goes through the brass bushings how thick is the so shaft the, the uh, main shaft is half inch stainless steel all the fasteners used on this product are stainless steel anything that is steel or aluminum is powder coated and this uh, is a PVC box weather type while oh, you're inside the bus we just connected this to the loom area coming out here and okay so with this plate this plates provided it'll have a seven eighths inch hole drilled through it and because the hole is off center you'll be able to turn it in any direction you need to to cover this larger hole that you have this is the size hole you have for a and some noise from another bus going by this is the size hole you'll have for a Thomas but on a Bluebird or a um, International you'll have a different size hole and sometimes two smaller holes so what we're going to do before you put this plate on you're going to silicone around this hole so it's nice and watertight doesn't quite that take that much but my first is a bit as a glob and then we will fasten this up and put one screw into it The next step on the thing is to fish through this blue wire that you put under the rib. Put it in the same loom as you have. That's the hot wire, right? This power will wire. be the power wire going out to the new system. I just shove it in almost anywhere just to get it through there. And I originally had this taped at the bottom I could have cut it off and I might have to in this case because it doesn't want to feed through <coughs> using a utility knife just cut through the tape that they had here so you can get at the room a little easier tape it together up at the top here and around where that other wire comes out and then we'll use a zip tie to actually hold it put a grommet around here in a minute and then he'll be fishing the rest of this loom in through here. We're just fishing this through a piece of channel. What are you fishing? The light wire going out to the sign. And 
you pull it back through most of the way. How much space do you leave? There you go. Just leave it at the end there, approximate. Now the wiring guy will take over. Alright, so we got our wiring loomed. Bring this some of this back in here. This is your ignition wire that we hooked up inside the bus. So mm -hmm. strip it. And we'll strip it like so. And we'll follow you got your ground. And this is this will be your ignition wire. It's red wire on this side, but we have a little blue indicator. Indicate blue, snap it in like that, and you're good. We want to bring our light wires in. Throw our grommet here. Bring these through here. Stick our loom in here. We're gonna take our relay. Yeah, hook up the wires. We want to hook up the wires first because we marked them. So it'll make it easier. What you use to mark it? Use a, a, a silver sharpie. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take our splitter that comes with the kit, and you're going to want to put it on your blue wire, because that's your switch wire. And then you'll hook up that end here. Hold that up for us, the whole thing. There you go. And now you want to take your sign wires and the red go to the two tabs and the red goes to the two tabs as we know and just double check everything make sure everything's nice and Connect it. And then we'll want to place this relay. So your 
your splitter wire could easily fit there. From this side, it's kind of good. What screw did you use? I used another 12 inch screw. And then we'll just take our splitter wire and you'll fall. Right below that, the, and this will be your splitter wire that goes inside the box. And that's right below the power switch. range. It's a switch, a switch, wire. switch wire. Great. And those are all pre-wired. And those are all pre-wired. And now we'll zip tie all this up. So we're going to determine how much length we need. Through this, you don't cut them until you get them. And we don't the cut them because this, and then you'll find out how much you need. And this is your actuator line, so we need that much. You'll only need the yellow and the green wire. These other little wires, you don't need to. Those could be cut off. So now we'll take our, open up our tabs here. And you'll see little tape on the wires here. So we know green goes to black on the other side. Push it all the way in, clip it down, make sure it's secure. And this white one, you see the little yellow tape. We know that will be the yellow wire. Slip it all the way in and push your tab down. Make sure it's tight. Got your ground, you got all your connectors in. And the electrical is done. Okay, now we're on to our sign portion. Pick up our sign. We'll line up the two pinholes here. We'll push it in. Install the top one first. Install the top one first. They should line up. Make sure that the back towards you is flush. And they should just slip right in. We'll connect the watertight fitting. And then we'll put our nut on. And it just has to be snugged. So. 
<laughs> what do we do if uh, if they're slightly not lining up? All right, so what you do is, if these aren't lining up, you take a pair of pliers, make sure that these are in there good. And there'll be flesh on the front. You gotta go over the front. Yeah, front towards me. It's gonna be flush there. Yeah, it's blank. See, this part is flush, and this part's not because the sign is on a little bit of an angle. Yeah. So what it comes? That's what happens. Frame going into a three. And if you look at it, the sign is just in, just ever so slightly. So now we'll take our bumper here, line it up to where we want it. Where is the, where do you want? We want like in the middle, just like that. is correct. Now you want to take the sign, pull it out a little bit, and just make sure that the sign doesn't hit the bus. Why? So it doesn't bang? So it doesn't bang on the bus. Now that won't bang. Go ahead. Now we're ready for the actuator. We'll take the actuator. Line it up to the hole. Take our clevis pin. What if it doesn't line up correctly? Now these are adjustable, but you want to. But this one's going to be perfect. What you want to do is take your hand, push the sign in a little bit, put your clevis pin in, and make sure that the sign is tight to the bus. So, Take our clevis pin and put our clevis pin in. Okay. Then I'm going to take uh, two five eighths inch wrenches. And tighten up the back. So a nylon thread. You got an international. You're gonna to want to do the. Uh, have you got? Sometimes. They get to a point and you can't tighten them anymore even though the bolt isn't snug and that's normal on these nylon inserts. They just get to be really hard. Hi right, guys, after a good job done and you've got the full solution installed now, we're going to test it and see what it actually works or not. So let's watch this happen. Doors open. Arms out. Arm closes. Congratulations, guys. Bravo. Good job. Thank you very much.